Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to this October 2024 energy update. And this is going to be a big picture update. So if you're looking for really granular information on energies just in October, this is probably not the video for you. But if you are interested in the big picture and how some of the events and the energies that we're working with in October here, how that fits into the overall picture of the unfoldment of consciousness and the ascension uh, journey that uh, we're moving through through on earth here over the next few months or a couple of years, then stay tuned because that's what we're going to be covering. I'm going to be sharing some insights that I've received from my Akashic guides. Um, there's going to be some astrological information. We're going to cover the eclipse that's happening on this day that I'm recording, uh, October 2nd, and how that is tied into these larger themes. All right. So, um, and I'm also going to be sharing a couple of events that I've got coming up that will help us to work with these energies in a positive way. All right, so let's start with this eclipse. It's uh, October 2nd, and we're looking at an annular solar eclipse, which is the kind where the sun is in the middle and you see the corona around it. Um, and it's going to be visible mostly from the ocean <laughs> or, or the very tip of South America. But of course, these energies are felt by all of us. All right. So what I'm understanding and being given to understand about this solar eclipse is that it marks the ending of a cycle. Um, and I'm being shown that there's this interim period before the next set of eclipses. Um, and events and energies that come to the forefront during this interim period will be influential in shaping the whole era that we're collectively moving into. So this is a time of immense creative power and a time where we're really going to be wanting to watch our thought patterns. Staying positive, keeping a positive attitude is huge at this time. All right, so what does this mean? Interim period, eclipse cycles. Um, well, this eclipse on October 2nd is the second to last and the last total eclipse in a whole series of eclipses along the Aries Libra polarity. Okay. And this series started back in April, 2023. For the past year and a half, we've been uh, in this cycle. And the next and final one will be a partial solar eclipse next March 29th, right? Just as we're entering Aries season again. So eclipse series overlap each other, kind of like layers of bricks, okay? So a few months after this Aries Libra eclipse series um, that we're currently in comes to an end at the end of next March, a new series will start, and that one will be on the Leo Aquarius axis, but that doesn't start until February 17th, 2026, all right? Um, but there is another series that overlaps both of them. We've already started it. Um, it's the Pisces Virgo Eclipse series that just started last month with a September 17th full moon partial lunar eclipse in Pisces. Okay, so that series is going to continue next spring with a total lunar eclipse right before for the last solar eclipse of the Aries Libra, okay? So we're going to get that lunar eclipse in the Pisces Virgo, and then we're going to get the last Aries Libra eclipse, okay? And then this Pisces Virgo series will take us all the way through February 2027, all right? So we're talking about this whole timeline here between actually last uh, April uh, 2023 all the way through February 2027 um, as this kind of time period that we're moving through, all right? And this is a very, it, it feels to me like this, it, it's, there's a lot of energy of change around this, okay? And there may be a lot of chaos around this that we're moving into, all right? So again, super important to stay positive. All right, my guides tell me, quote, the thoughts you nurture and the actions you take during this interim period will lay the foundation for the work you will be doing for the rest of your life, okay, and for the trajectory of the unfoldment of consciousness. So this is really a collective shift that we're really in the midst of right now, okay, and we have the power to shift that shift, right? Whether in a negative direction or a positive direction for life on earth, okay? So I, I asked for clarity 
Um, first of all, on, on why this interim period is so important, okay? And they really guided me to take note of the upcoming Jupiter retrograde in the sign of Gemini that starts this month on October 9th and it runs through next February 4th right before those two eclipses okay um so I, I just asked for clarification on why this is significant and I was shown an image of a flying fish upside down on its back and the words shifting timelines okay so again we have the power to shift timelines to move ourselves individually personally on two higher timelines and th through our influence as you know awakening beings right to shift the whole collective onto higher timelines, especially if enough of us do the inner work, right? Um, so here's what I was told about this period of time. And I, I, by the way, I was shown that this whole thing is an interim period, right? Up until, um, you know, from about now until the first eclipse in that Leo um, Aquarius, right, um, series, which is 2026, right? So it's a whole big interim period, but especially this winter period, right? Winter into very early spring, um, a huge amount of power here, right? It's almost like this womb space. We're going to be asked to go within um, and really deeply uh, do some inner work, right? So um, again, I was showing this flying fish upside down, the words shifting timelines. And the explanation that I was given is that this period of time is a crucible, right? The flying fish upside down refers to the air sign Gemini that Jupiter is in and also the influence of the new Pisces Virgo eclipse series we've just entered, right? Now remember, Jupiter is the planet of expansion, right? Anything that Jupiter goes in, um, you know, effects, it's going to expand it. Uh, but Jupiter's in retrograde right now, remember, okay, that it goes into retrograde um, October 9th and comes out on February 4th. So when we're looking at Jupiter in Gemini, Gemini is usually this very airy sign, um, a lot of communication, um, the playfulness, <laughs> you know, it's the twins. So it's just a lot of duality, right? And so Jupiter in retrograde is really going to shift the energy of that Gemini, all right? And so it uh, sometimes the Gemini can and they kind of find it hard to focus. It, this is going to make a, a, a beautiful time where it's going to be easier actually to go within and, and to focus in, right? And um, to maybe have less distractions. It, 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 it's going to be a time where, you know, if we put our minds to it, we can really do some deep, deep inner work, you know, starting this month, okay? Um, and which is beautiful because it also uh, corresponds to the winter season so beautifully, right? This is the time that we are, you know, physically being invited and apologies to anybody in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, you, you may have to adjust for, for, you know, what's going on with you. Um, but especially for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, this is very much in sync with the seasons, right? Um, uh, getting quiet, getting still, going within, introspection. It's huge, all right? Um, so the other thing is that uh, there's a big um, encouragement to look at the emotional element of water, all right? Okay, because with this fish flying upside down, it's putting that emotional element of water, taking precedence over the mental element of air, okay? Um, so this whole time we're entering again, remember this Pisces Virgo eclipse season, um, there's two elements that we're working with here, which is water and earth, okay? Um, so I'm told this is a time when the emotions can be seen in a new perspective and the emotional underbelly brought to light in a big way. So this could be an invitation to shadow work for some of us. So four things that I'm being shown um, to, to perhaps put some attention on during this period and especially during this month of October, first thing is grounding right? Uh, rooting deeply into the earth, um, 
my guides say you are spirit rooting deeply into matter. Okay, a lot of things that we can do that are grounding. Besides, you know, what comes to mind immediately, of course, is going out and walking barefoot, being in nature, beautiful practices, any kind of grounding, grounding techniques that you do spiritually, but also paying attention to your material circumstances, right? And taking control of that. So um, taking, you know, go in the kitchen and cook, right? Work with the physical things, work with the food that you bring into the body, right? Blessing the food, that's a grounding activity because the food is literally ground that's in, in you know, it's earth that you consume. Um, other things, uh, paying attention to your finances and you know how good it feels when you know that your finances are in order um, if you're getting this feeling of oh when i talk about finances it is really time to go and look you know maybe stop some subscriptions that you're not using anything like that will help you to ground and feel more secure um, same if you if you have a business or something um, this is a great time during this next few months to do your business planning, right? And uh, it's not the most fun thing necessarily, but to really sit down and look and say, hey, you know, where, or anything you do, whether it's your business or anything else, you know, what activities am I doing that are really rewarding? Um, what aren't so much? Where do I need to start putting my energy? And where do I need to start drawing my energy back from, right? So any of these grounding activities is going to bring us back into our center, back to our roots, right? Um, number two is introspection, going within. So if you haven't developed a consistent meditation practice, this would be a really good time to do it. The energies are going to support you in that, all right? Um, or even journaling, whatever practice that helps you to really look within and, um, you know, tune into yourself. Um, beautiful time to start being really consistent about that because that's how we hear the inner voice that's how we hear that that still small voice that guides us in the right direction every single time okay uh, learning to come in and be quiet this is a, a tremendous time of that we have that is really going to support us in that because when we hit that airy season next spring things are going to explode into activity in some way one way or another right um whatever that looks like on the world at that time so we're going to want to really be grounded and prepared for that um Number three, emotional healing is really being encouraged. Pay attention to your emotions. That's what all this introspection can help with. Um, and also remember that not all emotional energy that we carry is even ours, right? We often will pick it up from other people. And also remember that emotional healing can often entail ancestral healing, healing those ancestral wounds. Um, and that's uh, number four here is remembering the ancestors is another practice that is super supported right now by the, the, the universal energies in October, especially. All right. So healing ancestral wounds, honoring the ancestors, connecting with the ancestors, just remembering them. Right. Because their efforts all went into making life possible for us so that we can continue. Right. Continue the lineage and the, the work that we do is not just individual, but it goes in bloodlines. Right. If families work often on the same energy pathways and healing those. Um, so remembering the ancestors and honoring them and working with them, working on ancestral healing um, that can often open up huge expanses for us to start really stepping into our heart work, our soul work in a, in a, in a just more accelerated way. And here's my invitation to you. I have two free um, gatherings, uh, the Lightworkers Cafe gatherings happening in October. 
One is a guided meditation gathering on October 13th, and that is for ancestral healing. It's going to open up this whole portal of uh, Samhain, the Halloween season, right? Bringing us into some protected space, inviting the ancestors in in a way that is safe and protected so that we can initiate whatever healing needs to be done um, th through the ancestral lines. And then on October 27th, I have a mystic art work shop um, where we're also going to be in protected space and calling on the spirits of the ancestors so uh, connecting with one or more ancestors and connecting with them through art or and, and or journaling it's going to be really fun so you are invited to that um, to learn how to join it is free for all heart-centered spiritual sp spiritual seekers um, go to spokenearth.org slash membership and it will guide you right through so i hope to see you then i wish you a beautiful october and remember you were born to be free